Okay, we're gonna start a little bit early, but I think it should be okay. So I'll just slowly start things up. Hope you guys are doing well. And、uh, so I got a rule. I got a very small first rule that this live stream, okay. Nobody talk about election result. That's just you know th that's behind us. Well, whatever it is, you know, just let's not just think about that. Let's not talk about it. I don't care. I don't mind who you're supporting if you're in the U.S. Okay, let's just you know try to enjoy art. Try to have a little bit moment of peace and calm. Whatever it is, you know, it's been crazy couple of days. You know, I think we can all agree. No matter which side are you on, so let's just try to enjoy a simple painting, enjoy our time together, and have you know just have a little bit moment of some quiet time and peacefulness here. Okay, I'm just happy that I can paint and I can spend some time with you guys. So, all right, so this is what we're going to paint. So this is a There, over there. So this is a screenshot that I took when I was playing Microsoft、uh, Fly Fly Simulator. They have wonderful, wonderful graphic, you know, beautiful cloud generation, and pretty good graphics. So I took that shot. I was flying a I think seven four seven. I'm not quite sure. And I think. That was on top of Paris, I think. So I just took that shot because I really liked, the, you know, the simplicity of the image. It's just that beautiful cloud scene, you know, with the airplane and a little bit of the river in the ground. So I think that's going to be a very nice painting. Okay, so let's just get started. I am going to hide my face. Hello, Eric from Florida. Okay, how do you have such a nice voice?、Um, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, though. Okay, so let's try. Let's get started. And funny enough, I cannot find my pencil. That being said, I should have a spare somewhere. Okay. Oh, actually, I found it. Okay, sorry about that. The drawing itself is gonna be very, very simple. Okay, we're on Washington. Hey, a fellow Washington. Okay, so it's going to be very, very simple. Just going to be an airplane, clouds, and horizon line. That's pretty much it. And even a horizon line. I'll say it's mostly very soft and blurry, so I'll set the horizon line somewhere down here. Okay, so very very simple over here. So again, the only thing that we want to worry about is the the airplane. So we're gonna set the airplane somewhere around here. So、uh, I just did a. I just did a video about perspective, but in terms of the perspective, there's actually not that much to talk about here. I'm just gonna eyeball most of it. So the wing spanning out with a little bit of the curve, and the two turbines here. The airplane isn't even the focus. I mean, it probably is some sort of focus because it's going to be. One of the darkest thing here, but it's going to be really small, so it's not going to matter too much. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Okay. I think it's a little bit too bright. I apologize. Okay. Okay. The, the 
airplane here. There's the, the window in the front. Okay, so let's again let's try to draw the wing as one single line since they are symmetrical and connected. And back there, get a turbine here turbine here and that's pretty much it okay so the airplane and most of it is just gonna be cloud cloud wise I'm not going to do a drawing it's just not really necessary and I will try to take the screenshot as a reference but as much as that goes I'm not going to copy everything that I see it's a computer generated cloud and even if it is a photograph, still, it's just really hard to copy exactly as is. So especially for things like a watercolor painting, that's just not necessary. Okay. Sorry for the noise. Let me try to turn off some stuff here. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the paper with a sponge. It's going to be a lot of wet onto wet, so I'm going to try to wet the paper just to give me a little bit more time to work on it. Uh, pretty much the whole sky. There's actually not a thing that I really going to leave it as as white okay. I see I'm gonna loosely indicate the the river down here so just something like that and that goes across here like so okay so again very simple and as much as there's a lot of details down here but it's just there's just not really that much value differences so there's not a lot of the details that i really need to paint in i might make the river just a little bit brighter but again it's not too necessary so yes cold press paper my pencil is actually 4b lead just because i you know, i like how dark it can go and it's really soft but 2B should be okay as well. I'm just used to use 4B. Okay. And uh, down here as well. Which watercolor art do you recommend to check out? There's so many. Joseph's Bookvich, of course, uh, Andy Evenson, where I learned a lot of my technique from. Uh, if you are, if you want to check it out, also check out uh, Chen Chongwei, Chen Chongwei, which is a very good artist from from Taiwan. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, go on Instagram and just you know check out watercolor, and, and there's a lot of great artists that you can you can learn from. You can check them out. Okay, so I'm going to make some colors. So cobalt blue with some olives and crimson. We got this nice purplish looking sky. There's not it's not very saturated blue because it's close to sunset. So the blue is turning sort of pink purplish color. And then we have our cloud color so it's gonna be quite a bit of orange some yellow you know that really warm glow color I might need to squeeze out a little bit more orange here cat orange hue from Daniel Smith okay yes that is a jump pike palette I've been starting using it for a lot more because especially for scenery because I need to you know do a lot of big pile of mixtures 
I find this easier. Also, what that this is what Andy Evenson recommended. So I give it a try, and I like it quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Sorry, just one thing I need to do real quick. The camera for the palette. It would jump in and out with the focus. Yeah. Sorry. I haven't done this for a while, so I tend to forget there are a few settings that I need to do. Okay, so. Cloud here, and then. I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of neutral tint. Cobalt blue, and some. Burn umber to get a little bit of dark for the cloud. Okay, so. Well, I'm gonna start. So, this is going to be a little bit stressful for me. Hopefully, not for you. I'll try to make it as relaxing as possible. That being said, because it's a big cloud sky and stuff, there's going to be a lot of wet onto wet, and I only have limited time to do it. So, okay, take a look at it one last time. I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, so again, kind of like a nice pinkish sky. I'll add a little bit more. Blue here on the side here. Okay. Don't hesitate too much, just go for it. I already wet the paper, so that gives me a little bit more time. That being said, I uh, forgot it's fresh paint, so it's really thick. Okay. So, but I'll add a little bit red actually, so it's not just super orange, a little bit red. That might help. Okay. Okay. Some orange here. Paint over the airplane. Okay. Doesn't matter. Airplane is going to be a lot, a lot darker. A lot, a lot. So don't worry about that. Okay, so I got a lot of orange here, fresh paint. So I'm just gonna grab those. Okay, paint that into it. Seriously, a big cloudscape, just go for it. Okay, you don't want to hesitate too much. You want some nice, fresh paint. And I apologize, I'm not able to look at the chat at the moment because I really need to focus on getting this getting this wash done. So I will try to read it when I get a little bit of breezer. Neutral tint, a lizard and crimson, some more blue. Okay, get a little bit of dark cloud here. However, try to keep it simple. Okay. Once you focus on the photo, the screenshot, whatever it is that you're painting from, we tend to look at the detail a lot. However, for this specific painting, Painting a lot of detail in the cloud is not a good idea. I want to keep it fresh and translucent. Cloud is you know, they're pretty.
pretty much just like water vapors and stuff so they absorb light there's some translucency in it they absorb light so you can see some of the light underneath so don't fiddle with it too much okay now down here I'm going to give it a little bit of a yellow glow here. Okay. Okay, I see a bunch of thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Whatever it is you're thanking me for, uh, for the video and stuff. Okay. All right. No, oh, I'm really glad that people enjoy, you guys enjoy my content. I enjoy painting, I enjoy sharing. I think at the end of the day, that's all that matter that we can kind of just be together and enjoy some time together. Okay, some more dark in this cloud. Okay, so I actually want a little bit more dark up here while I still can. It's like almost kind of just connect that cloud. Gonna add some more red to this. Okay. Again, this is actually quite stressful because I I have really limited time to do this. Okay, so a little bit more orange here. So it's still damp, so I can paint wet onto wet here. However, really need to watch my wetness here. If it's too much water, it's going to seep back in and you're gonna start getting those cauliflower edges that that nobody's like you know we're not asking for right now. And I think I'm just going to continue the wash all the way down just to give it nice, a nice clean wash. So quite a bit things happen in the first wash. The whole sky, the color transition and the all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Okay. Whew. Okay, take a quick sip of water. Now, there's a lot of things that we have there's a lot of things that we can do we need to do right now, not that we can do. Okay. Why do I have a lot of time? Because once this is dry, I cannot do wet onto wet anymore. I can re-wet the paper, but I prefer not to. Just try to keep it fresh. So I'm going to do some wet on wet work right now while I still can. So there are some clouds here that if I put in thick enough paint, I can add a little bit more clouds here. So if we come in down here, over here, okay. You can a little bit thick enough paint, use the tip of my brush, add some cloud into it in the horizon, in the distance. Okay. Okay, and this, and this, let me add a little bit more orange here. Just wanted to give it a little bit more glow while I still can. 
And you can see I already starting to get some hard edges. That means that it is drying. So this part, I'm just going to leave it. It's probably not worth to, to mess around with this anymore. So when you do this, do it very lightly. Don't start to press down the paper too hard. Okay. This is one of the stage that if it works out, it's great, but it's kind of dangerous because you are essentially you know, really trying to play with the wetness, trying to push the the limit of what you can do. Okay. Oh no, I don't have to I don't need to go anytime soon, so yeah. That being said, I don't want to spend too much time on this painting too. Like the more I work on it, the less it's going to look nice and fresh. down here okay so some more cloud down here so into the horizon into the distance as well we want some clouds there just to Add a little bit more variety, also a little bit more detailed as well. So, uh, I mean, the trap is trying to do too much, and I feel like I'm in danger of trying to do too much at this point. I think it's very important that we. And keep the overall picture in mind instead of trying to really start to trying to render clouds, which is not really what I want to do here. Like cloud is the you know the setting, the background, but I'm not trying to do a crazy cloud render. Okay, so there's some clouds here and in, you know, in the distance paper is still a little bit damp. I start to get a little bit of hard edges, but I think it'll be okay. Pink Floyd. I like Pink Floyd. I haven't listened to them for quite a while. I'll check that album art out. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so the bottom of the cloud Let's keep, give it a little bit simpler base here. Yeah, let me try to soften this a little bit. It's giving me this weird edge. Okay, a little bit of hard edge, you know, let it be. I think at this stage, if I try to do too much, it's just not going to look good. So better just let it be. And that's one of the things that is kind of difficult in watercolor is that you need to learn to let things go. If things doesn't work out the way you want to, but you know it is the time to for you to stop messing with it, even if you don't like it completely, still a better idea to just let it be and you know let it go because the more you're trying to control it the more you're trying to make it 
do what you want it to do, it usually doesn't end up too well. And and I feel like, you know, that's that's also a very good kind of therapeutic thing about it is that you learn to let things go. You just let it do its thing and you try to practice and as you try to practice you learn more about the property of watercolor you learn more about how it works and then you it's kind of like knowing a friend you know you can kind of predict what is going to happen and you can work with it better and better that's what I always been trying to say is that you are trying to work with watercolor you're not trying to control it control the medium you're working with it so so now this is at the stage that this is almost dry so I need to stop working on whatever is up there okay those are not for me to mess with anymore it's, it's pretty much done and if I go back and mess with it it's not going to end well okay I can still add a little bit more volume here if possible okay I have a little bit too much water here so you can see that it is actually giving some giving me some weird edges so I think the way I can try to combat that is just trying to paint the whole thing over Just let's well, just let this just let this thing merge. I yeah. I'm just gonna let that thing merge. Try too hard to separate them. I don't think that's gonna end well. Okay. So let's continue and darken the bottom a little bit more. I'm gonna take a big brush so it will be easier. So we got this nice glow here so I don't want to paint that out so I'm just going to paint from the edge of that glow. Over here it gets a little bit darker too. Sun is over somewhere over here so the rest of it is I can just kind of paint over. So I'll leave a little bit of the river out as well. But again, it's really dark, so you can barely see it anyways. So. I overwork my painting every day. I have tracks teaching me a set what yep. Yeah, so the the thing about watercolor is is definitely that you it kinda teach you, force you not to not to overwork too much. Actually I can just paint this over. I think it's still pretty light actually. So Okay. Okay. <laughs> you 
Okay, we definitely need to darken this a little bit more. That being said, I think... The painting is kind of at a good stage. I was just slowly working on it now. I can use hair dryer to make it a lot darker, but I think... I, mean, I can use hair dryer to make it dry faster, but I think... I'm gonna hold off on that. And instead, I'm just gonna try to work into it. Since the whole ground floor is actually very, very soft. Also, you know, the atmosphere and dark. So I'm just gonna try to mix like a very dark value without a lot of water and I'm just gonna work into it. Okay, now I'll try to leave out a little bit of the gap for the river. Reload your brush, okay, especially when you're doing something like this. If your paint run out, only water is left, and then you're going to create cauliflower edges. And at, the, at least right now, I don't want that. Okay, so I can start to leave some random highlight and stuff. Well, it's not highlight, I'm just gonna leave some random gaps so that it can create some illusions of details of the building top and things like that. Now, they're gonna be really soft actually because it's still kind of damp, so I'm working it wet onto wet. It's actually kind of moist right now, so anything I try to paint around is going to be soft edge which I don't mind. Okay, but... okay, there's quite a bit of bucklings in the paper right now just because how wet it is. So I'm gonna work, mostly gonna work down here while waiting for that to be completely dry so I can put the airplane in. And then that should be a then we will be done with this painting. So this painting, we pretty much finish it in one go. Okay, okay some warmer color here. So we can kind of transition that into this glow here. You're a great teacher, thank you. I'm also still a, still a student. I learn things every day. I mean, I learn things every time I do a new painting. So we're all just kind of learning together here. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze out the moisture of my brush and I'm going to try to soften this a little bit. Uh, try to give it an... Okay, a little bit yellow. Yeah, so I just really want to give it a little bit more glow here. Okay, some damp brush. Again, we'll soften some of the edges on the top.
Okay. Okay, so the bottom is getting dry. It's starting to dry. It's not completely dry yet. And as it is drying, I can come back and add more things here and there. So, so as you can see, things are really soft. Like I tried to leave a little bit of river here, but it's really, really soft. So I'm going to come back in with like nice dry mixture of dark. I'm just going to paint it, paint the side of it like so. Okay, that's going to give it some illusion of the rivers kind of receding in. And maybe a little bit of the dark underneath some of this incidental highlight I'm trying to leave. So that it just give it a little bit suggestion of structures and some soft details here and there. Okay, so just the tip of your brush, okay, very simple. Sometimes it's, it's the simple things that that's the hardest thing to do. I find like the more I paint watercolor, something that's appear, you know, appears to be very simple. Those are usually the, the very challenging thing. You know, big cloudscape, you know, how to make it look you know very impactful but also nice and clean those are the really hard thing to do for me because you always tend to do too much and most of the time you have one you have one attempt at it once it's dry it's over and then you know there's nothing you can add more that will make it look better Okay, I'm gonna maybe add a few things here. So maybe some buildings poking up. Okay, a little bit more mixtures here. might be a little bit too much water so I need to add more paint okay some buildings and stuff maybe a road uh, some more buildings whatever Again, this is like a very fun stage, just get to play with it and try to hint some details. By the time it's dry, hopefully it's going to be pretty unified. <laughs> okay, it looks like there's something underneath. Okay, I think that's all that really matters. I actually might paint off some of this as well. I don't want too much contrast here. <laughs> looks so beautiful and constant. It's not end yet. <laughs> and I still don't know if it's gonna look good. I'm a lot of faith is required. Okay, so maybe a little bit of details here. Few. Okay, so I'm gonna try to soften this a little bit with a damp brush. Okay, every time you want to soften something, squeeze out the moisture. Okay, so you can get a little bit of the dry brush and try to soften that. Okay, don't try to soften it with just straight water. It's going to be get it's going to get too wet. Okay, so I'm almost done here. So I need to stop messing with it. Uh, we got some we got some nice details, but I'm just trying to take away 
the unnecessary details here and there. Okay. I think I might do a glaze later just to cover it up. You know, just to make it a little bit more unified. This is dry though, so I'm going to paint the airplane. And my hope is that once the airplane is done, the whole thing is going to look a lot more complete. I'm betting a lot of the <laughs> effect on a very small shape here. Okay, so a little bit of blue there. But again, this is a very small shape, so we there's no need to try to get too much detail out of it. Essentially, this is just a silhouette. So I'll get that shape in. Uh, grab a little bit of orange. So we definitely want the value to be darker, like much darker than this, than the clown the sky in the background. But I still try to give it a little bit of uh, color variation. It's nice. Okay, there's a little bit of the reflection of the sky underneath, so I'll leave a little bit of that on paint. Leave that out. Okay, so the wing. I'm gonna try to be careful and... Okay, right here. Where the turbine is. Okay. And another wing here. Okay, gonna try to pull that line out. Curve up a little bit. And here is another turbine. I'll make it a little bit closer. So I'm eyeballing most of it. I'm not paint. I'm not doing this in you know precise perspective or anything. I just need to get that shape. That's about it. There we go. What a difference does that make? Okay. So once this in, it just pops out. Okay. So that's why I said a lot of faith is required when you do that because until you really get to the dark you don't see the whole picture because the value range is, is not complete. But once I get those dark in and all of a sudden the depths just the depths just come out and you can feel the airplane just kind of popping out. A little bit dark detail here, really dark. Okay, but let's... yeah, and I see I'm gonna fill this part up. There's no need to leave that white. I mean, it's not white, but just you know, try to fill that space. I do want to leave this part on paint because it's just the reflection of the underneath sky okay so let me kind of step back a little bit all right yeah i think overall this is going the way i want to i do wish that the cloud has a little bit more contrast that being said 
to me, this is done. And when I say done, I don't mean that. You know, this is like complete, but I mean that that stage has passed. So even that, if I want a little bit more contrast here, the only way I can do it is after everything is dry, I wet it again and I paint it again. But even if I do that, it's just not going to look as fresh as I just go for it and do that. You know, when it's you know first time it is wet, so I might rewet it and paint on it. I might not. But right now, I do like the softness and everything, so I might just kind of leave it. I'm, I am going to glaze this over because this needs to be a little bit more unified, a little bit too much value jumping out in and out right now. So I'm just going to get that. So yeah, so I think I'm going to use a hair dryer to dry that part up. And I'm doing going to do a glaze over. Please recommend some paint brand. I use mostly Daniel Smith's, you know, Daniel Smith's. And I use some of the color I use Mission Gold. That's pretty much it. I don't have a lot of, I haven't tried a lot of different brand. Daniel Smith's just because I'm in Seattle and this is that's where they based in. So. I've been doing demo there, so I got quite a few paint from them. Uh, Mission Gold, same thing. I heard a lot of good things about them, so they actually sent me some paint for me to test, and I haven't used those up. <laughs> they are really, really good. So pretty much that. Okay, I'm going to blow this dry, so I will mute my microphone. Okay, so uh, still a little, little bit damp, but I think it's dried enough. At the same time, this is completely dry, so I think I'm gonna take a little bit of risk and re-wet that and see if I can get a little bit of volume there. Yeah, just a little bit actually, not that much. So again, I'm gonna grab my sponge. Okay, very carefully wet this. Actually, I might use a brush, be a little bit softer on paper. Not everywhere, just the place that I want to add some volume. So over here. Oops. So just some clean water. I have another bucket of clean water there. So just a couple areas here. Okay, and then I'm gonna mix a darker value. Some alizarin crimson, burnt umber, some blue. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of dark color here. And Actually, wait a little bit. It's quite wet right now. Okay. All right. So let's just go for it. Okay. 
Okay, we're adding some more volume to this side of the cloud, which is a little bit darker as well. So. I also give it a little bit subtle hard edges here just to get a little bit more shape out of the cloud actually so I think this is a good call definitely don't want to overdo it though I still want to maintain the overall softness of the of the cloud Use a big brush, okay? See, like I'm using a quite a decent sized brush. If you use a brush that's too small, you're not able to get some big stroke, and then you're going to f scrub it a little bit too much. Try to use a bigger brush and get some big stroke in, and let watercolor do rest of the work. Some neutral tint, some blue. Okay. Okay, so one, two. Try to minimize minimize my brush stroke one side of my brush here one okay and add a little bit of orange down here okay that's it okay Time to leave it. Okay. And down here, I'm just gonna grab all the colors I have here, which is pretty much just this kind of neutral gray. And I'm gonna do the glaze underneath here. And hopefully, that's gonna unify the color. a little bit more paint I feel is a little bit too weak let me turn this thing around like it's gonna cover up some of the detail and stuff but I don't mind I think the overall big value relationship is far more important than trying to preserve detail I mean, down there, there's not a lot of detail anyways. I'd rather people focus on what's happening up here. So this painting is actually quite simple. I mean, it should be simple, just that there's a lot of wet onto wet. So that makes it a little bit tricky to do, but... Okay. Okay, um, this is pretty much it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Don't want to overwork this. Okay. 
bring back just a little bit of the river. So damp brush and just go over it a little. Bring that out again and yeah, that's about it. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Let me step back a little bit and see. It's pretty important. It's such a difference when you are kind of in a distance away, then you're looking at it like this close, like which is you know my mostly I just look at it that close. And that makes a huge difference because I would, you know, I tend to start to focusing on detail and stuff. But it's, it's much for this painting. It's really not about detail. It's really just like the big picture that you're trying to do. So, and sometimes it helps actually have a monitor looking at what you guys are seeing. So, it's like a very small monitor, so I can kind of see my painting full view but a lot smaller scale and that sometimes helps too okay so i'll try to put some of this cloud back little bit of very fine details down here and okay I'm just gonna call it a day thank you guys so much and I hope you guys enjoy this session I think we all kind of need that just you know just to kind of relax and enjoy it a little bit do you still work as an artist for video game yeah um I am, yeah, I still have my day job, which is a video game artist, for those of you who are interested. Uh, I'm working on a game called Halo. I don't know if you guys know that game. Hopefully you do. I'm mostly doing the background work, so, which is something that's actually something like these. Just big background vista, sky, they're called skybox artists. But it's all digital work, so when I'm doing watercolor, it's a very nice balance for me because I get to do things a little bit more organically. And I think it's very important that you kind of get that, getting to that stage where there's undo is not available because when you're doing digital work, you can constantly undo things. Watercolor is like the extreme of that. You just cannot undo almost anything. And once it's dry, the only way you can fix it, you shouldn't even try to fix it, it's just to try to cover it. And But if you paint something too dark, you, there's just no way you can fix that. So yeah, I like to be able to balance myself by painting watercolors when I'm not at work. So I think that's really helpful for me as an artist. So yeah, of course, I think every right now I'm doing, you know, this is all I'm working remotely as well, same as many people. And again, I'm very fortunate to still have a job right now. And but I'm working remotely. So I've been staying home for the most part of this year. Yeah, but good thing is I get to still get to paint, still get to do a live stream with you guys. So I think that's very, very nice. Okay. I like your render better than the pic. Thank you. <laughs> I do hope this is nice. Yeah. I think after it's dry, it's going to unify a little bit better too. So it's definitely a fun experience. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. It's 10. I will see you guys.